It's still our Nigeria, and with 60 days to the election as this administration's tenure draws to an end, the nation is in search of a new president. And come May 29, 2023, a new one shall be sworn in. Given the complexities and present realities of the country, it will not be a Tea Party for the next president of the Federation. But what do Nigerians expect from the next president? We know for a fact that it is not going to be President Muhammad Buhari coming back because he cannot do more than two tenors. Who will be this new president? It can be any of the 18 or more uh, candidates that are standing and vying for this presidency who is going to be the president. And if that person comes and becomes the president, what do Nigerians expect from that president? We will go on the streets sometime to get the feelers from other people. But for today, we'll be discussing with two gentlemen. First of them, we have uh, Mr. Vincent Anthony Obani. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Obani. Yeah, good morning, and uh, thank you for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. And uh, please, I would like to come on air, so I, my video is disabled by you. So, Okay, we'll, we'll see about that. And we also have Mr. Olubenga George joining us. Mr. George, welcome to the program. Good morning, and um, happy Boxing Day to you and to all Nigerians. Yeah. I wish I had some boxes to box now, box open anyway. <laughs> okay, well, uh, a, new, a new general, as it is, is coming to take the reins. A new, a new monarch, a new king is going to be crowned on May 29, as it is. Because we know our presidents are more or less like kings. They have so much power. But we still, as citizens, need to give an agenda sort of to them and tell them the kind of things that we expect from them. Now, first of all, we need to elect a president. What kind of president do we need? Let's begin from there before we begin to talk about expectations. What kind of president does Nigeria need come 2023? Let me begin with you, Mr. Ubani. With that being... Uh, uh being feared or favored by anyone, we should be expecting to have a, a kind of president that will be for the masses and uh, for the most especially for the younger generation who has been yearning to become involved in leadership. We should be expecting a leader that is between the youth constituency, that is um, among those that can, at least a leader that can operate uh, <laughs> They, they can meet up the electoral uh, 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 world that we are, the new era of electronics. A leader that can be able to communicate with uh, uh, young leaders like us, who has been in the, in the field of leadership trying to come on board for a new Nigeria. So we want a leader that will be pro producing a new Nigeria. And certainly, without being told, the leader has already been met. So we are just waiting for the uh, February to come to a fulfillment to uh, bring the new leader on board, which is um, his excellency. I, I, I don't know whether I should be asking you to tell us why you said the new leader has already emerged and all that. But uh, if we have time, we'll come back to that. But uh, we also need to listen to Lubenga George. Tell us what kind of leader, what are these qualities of a leader that you want in 2023? Benga, we can barely hear you. Okay, we 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 may have to discontinue with uh, Benga's audio. Um, it's giving us a little bit of problems. When the video, uh, the audio rather, improves, we are going to return to Benga to give us his uh, uh, feel or his perspective of who a good leader should be come 2023. I know that whenever we're talking about a leader, we, we zero in on the president and talk about the qualities that a president should have. But no matter how bastardized uh, the three tiers of government has been, have been rather, we still have presidential a uh, president, we still have a governor, we still have a local government chairman. So when you're talking about the leaders, 
and you're talking about qualities that leaders should have, you should know also that whether it is a president or a governor or a local government uh, chairman, we need those qualities across board because every of them matters. And this is our Nigeria. If we want it to be great, everybody has to be great. And everybody in positions of responsibility have to be great. So in the state, house, state houses of assembly, we need people of the same qualities that you will be mentioning to yourself. And you'll be, you know, doing a, a checklist of whether chairman, house of assembly member, national assembly member, anywhere that you are going to have someone in leadership. And even if they come to your community and say it is your turn to provide a board chairman in so, 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 because it happens in some places, they come to your community and say, okay, we need to produce or have a board chairman for this, this uh, organization or agency, uh, mention one person. Those, those people have to have the same qualities that you want for the president or governor or local government chairman. But we're still here with Mr. Obani, and Mr. Obani, you have mentioned some of these qualities that um, uh, you need in a leader in 2023. Are you telling us that um, these are the ones that we need for 2023 and they have been lacking, or you're just saying that they should have been more than they are now? Well, to be very frank with you, you know, for a very long time, since 1999 to date, it has been from one uh, from one leadership to another. But funny enough, uh, it seems the same people that started the 1999 leadership to date are the same people in power. And um, what we understand is that they only understand one thing. That system they understand since 1999 is what they have been operating. And that's why the country has not been moving forward. You know. I can put it to you that there has been a lot of failure in leadership in this country. Yeah, there's not new thing about it. There's been a lot of failure. And uh, the young leaders has been agitating for a new era of younger generation to take over leadership. And this is why when they passed the North Young to Run Bill, uh, uh, when President Muhammad Dubari signed the North to Young to Run Bill, uh, we were expecting, yes, uh, we seems we are coming closer to when the young people will take over leadership. And um, I'm not going to be. Uh, I'm not going to uh, be worried because we have many young leaders in this coming election. But at this point in time, we have three potential leaders, which is uh, the Tunumbu and uh, Atiku and uh, Pito. The then the last person, Pankwaso. But at this point, Nigeria, we have already already narrowed out the leadership of who becomes the next president, which is between the Atiku, the Tunumbu, and uh, the Pito. And for your information. The young leaders has concluded that Peter will be the best person that can give us what we want. And that's why we we'll move ahead. And for us, we are already prepared to defeat anybody, including Tunubu, even in Lagos State. We are going to defeat Tunubu in Lagos State. Lagos State is the state we are prepared. I am sure from our analysis, APC has been winning between the 1.2 million, 1 million, 800,000 votes. But I'm telling you, we are going to shock the APC in Lagos State, because we are going to defeat both the governorship candidate in Lagos State, we are going to defeat for His Excellency by uh, February, we are going to come up with maximum vote of 2.5 million votes, because the people are angry, we are no longer ready for long stories, we want to take over governance, we are, we are bringing young leaders, if you watch the Labour Party governorship candidate in uh, Lagos State, he's a very young man who knows what he's doing, who is going to work with the young leaders in Lagos State, and we are, have nothing to worry about. When His Excellency is in Antony, in, as in the Asura, somebody like the, 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 the governorship candidate uh, uh, will be in, uh, in, in Lagos State, running the affairs of Lagos State, then we are going to experience a new Nigerian and a, a new Lagos State. So yes, we expect a lot so, of things from uh, now. Let, let me get let me get this straight let me get this straight are you campaigning for young people or you're just campaigning for peter Obi? because if you're talking about young people there are so many other young people that are in the race i, I think there's someone who is below 30 uh, below 40 sorry in the race we also have the other uh, people like the showerers of this world they are in in the race why are you not talking about them and you're talking about someone who has already been there uh, when uh, it all started in 1999 
Um, let me uh, be very clear to you. As the president of the coalition of all young candidates in Nigeria, my duty is to ensure that the young people are in charge. Okay, of the wait, wait, wait a minute. Just, just a moment. Just a moment. You are the DG Nigeria Youth. So that translates to being uh, the coordinator for all the young candidates because I didn't quite know what that Nigerian youth yes. was about. As, as the president general of all the young aspirants and candidates in Nigeria, all young people that is contesting election, hmm. I am in charge. I'm the president general of the young candidates and young aspirants in Nigeria. Okay. My duty is to speak on the interest, on the best interest of young people, young aspirants, young leaders, because these are the young candidates, young aspirants, these are the young leaders. My duty is to speak in their best interest, which is the young leaders want an avenue where the young people will take charge in governance. Because the old politicians have failed. Now that the old politicians have failed, it is now our duty as young people to take over the leadership. But we have also understand what with what happened in 2019 that the old politicians are not ready to give room for the younger generation to take fully charge. It is on that note we now need to say, okay, who is ready to work with the younger generation to form a government for 2023? And this is where people like I and all other leaders from different parts of the country, this is where we need to come together to say, okay see the party that can give us what we want. We have the young aspirants, we have the AAC show race there, we have Professor uh, Christopher of the Accord Party, we have uh, um, Barista Debaya Adewale of the uh, SDP, and all other parties, even the LADC, we have them. But now the problem is not having them. The problem is who can meet up the standard that can bring down the uh, old politician system, which is where the whole country has bring, narrowed down the whole candidate to like two, three, or four persons, which is Tunumbu is there, Atiku is there, um, Pankwaso is there, and Pitobi is there. And now when you bring these four people who are the major contestant in this coming 2023 election, the best and the youngest among them is Pitobi. And not only that Pitobi is the best, and the youngest among them, assistance to balance the equity, the fairness, and the, the equal rights and justice for one generation that will move forward. The best zone to produce the next president is from the Eastern Nigeria, which is where the people will come to produce as the next president. And this is where I'll come the into Nigerians, of that, but right now your audio is not that wonderful. We have seen the need for equal rights. Just a moment, Mr. Mr. Obani. We'll get into specifics, what you do as, um, as Nigeria youths and what you're trying to tell us about your activities. We'll get to know more about them. But we are rejoined by Olubenga George. Uh, George, uh, are you there? Okay, in order for us to put some things in order, we'd like to take a short break. And when we return... Our guests will still be here. Vincent Anthony Obani and Olubenga George will both be talking to us or they will continue talking to us about the way forward. We'll look at the activities of uh, whatever group that we have. Right now we're talking about the Nigeria Youths uh, that has Vincent Obani uh, at the hem of affairs and all other issues surrounding the 2023 elections and the hope of Nigerians in 2023. Just stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay, you're still um, on to the run-up on Plus TV Africa, and my name is Nyamgul Agaji. And it's um, Boxing Day today. <laughs> Yesterday was Christmas, and it was a Sunday as well. Someone said that um, if you have money, 
it is Christmas. If you do not have money, it is Sunday. So I'm sure there was something for you that you, you did, no matter that the condition of the country is very biting. We have Mr. Vincent Anthony Bani, and a lot of people are trying to say, come 2023, whatever we're experiencing now should never have. Affliction must not rise a second time. So we're trying to see what some Nigerians talk about uh, 2023, what the feel 2023 should be, what kind of leader do we want, what kind of things do we want that leader to do. Mr. Bani was telling us about the activities of the Nigeria youths. He will wrap up on that and then we discuss specifics on the kind of things that we need to see or we want to see uh, from the next president. So, Mr. Bani, I hope you're still there. Yes, I'm here with you. Okay, so um, we got interested in what you were talking about, the Nigeria youth, and you being at the helm of affairs and the kind of things that you do. Now, can you describe to, please try to describe to us um, what you do to make sure that you educate the people, because everything depends on how much of education the people that are going to actually vote have. So how much do you do, what do you do to make sure that the, the gospel according to Nigerian youths, gets to every, every nook and corner of Nigeria. Okay, you know Nigerian youth has um, a structure that is well properly structured uh, within the youth constituency, like the National Youth Council, the National Youth Parliament, uh, the Youth Congress, and all other youth umbrellas. Uh, that excluded the coalition of youth candidates, which is cut across in the 774 local government in Nigeria, all young people from different uh, local government in Nigeria are part of this uh, coalition. So the structures is uh, properly intact. What uh, I am personally doing at the stage now is to harmonize them together to let them know that, okay, our rights has been secured in this coming uh, government of the 2023. And um, the moment I can guarantee that uh, our issue because um, I can easily pass information and within the uh, space of um, uh, 30 minutes, the information has gotten to the 774 local government and all polling units in Nigeria because uh, the structure is, is there and I'm in touch with all grassroots. Like I said, currently I'm in my hometown. Uh, currently I'm inside my office in my hometown trying to uh, uh, attend to this interview that is uh, impromptu for me, but I still try to make it up. So. I'm doing everything within my reach to pass a message, a message that goes across the Federation uh, for them to know that um, Labour Party is the party we have uh, adopted and uh, P2B is the mandate. And now for them to know the party system where uh, we are voting so that they can identify the party logo, which okay, is uh, okay, why we are voting. Okay, okay, Mr. Obani, Mr. Obani, that's, that's, that's great. Um, we, ha we are rejoined by uh, Mr. George, Olubenga George. Uh, Mr. George, we're glad to know that you are still there. Now, we were talking about 2023 and uh, trying to get the qualities of the person that needs to lead Nigeria beyond 2023. And you were trying to give your own opinion when uh, the audio went bad. Could you please do us the honors to return to that and tell us what you would like to see in the incoming president? All right. Uh, thank you, much. Very much for the opportunity. Um, let, let me say again that um, what Nigerians want or what Nigerians need is not something that is difficult to achieve. Although, you know, if you follow the trajectory in our political campaign, uh, you will realize that uh, governance has been made. It, it looks so difficult, you know, and that good governance cannot be achieved. But it's not true. It has uh, actually been able to come that far because uh, the people are not involved. It's only had a, a very small percentage of people you know, getting involved. In governance, however, uh, I want to believe that with the recent trend, a 
focus um honorable Kubani and Lizard the passage of the North Young Plum Bean. Yes, that's been a great thing. Uh also we, we have seen improvement in technology, you know, also bringing significant improvement in uh political participation and political process. So um um two years ago we used to have people who would get uh so impressed and then uh they, they wouldn't even air their opinions on their views. But we have seen recently a fight in Twitter trend, in Facebook form and all of that and and all these people, you know, have become aware especially because of um the challenges they go through personally. You know what I mean? Um, life becomes um, increasingly difficult, you know, for the average Nigerian. Um, rising unemployment statistics, rising inflation, insecurity, economic challenges are there. So, you know, uh, the people have been what my circumstances and situation, you know, to wake up to their responsibility. So, um, 2023 is definitely going to be different from, uh, 2020, 2019. Uh, let's not also forget that, um, one of the best things that has happened to the electoral process is the passage of the Electoral Act into law. You know, in February 2002, um, was signed in by President Muhammad Bouhani and the National Assembly. That has brought significant improvement as people, I mean, to some extent, now have, um, faith in the electoral system, uh, they believe they are both in town and all that. So, having said all this, we should begin to ask what kind of Leader of Nigeria needs. Like I said again, it's very simple. Nigeria needs somebody that part of the people. You know, somebody that the system produces. Somebody that knows the reality beyond paper statistics. Somebody that feels the pain, that feels the pain, that feels the hunger of the people. No, I'm not talking about people who, you know, are very conversant with watching TV and therefore no one. No, no, I'm talking about somebody, you know, who is part of community, who is part of society, who, when there is a little Inflation in the price of special food is aware of it. It feels it. Yes, that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. Because I realize that um, there is a wide lacuna between leadership in Nigeria and, and the people and, and the followers. You know, the, the, the leaders do not really know. They can only imagine in their mind, you know, what the people are going to do. So when the people come and say they can't eat, we are, we are able to afford a three twenty. They, they don't understand. And this, I, I must tell you, that it, it's happening in our life and time. They don't know, they can't understand. Some haven't even been to market for 20 years. But they have, you know, the plethora of a of a person, you know, who helps them carry out some of this They have too much money. Some of them don't even live here. You know, they only come because it's a quality time. And they have what it takes. And of course, we only want that. They have a lot of money. And the question again is, how do many of them make this money? This money can make so, by hitting, hitting back, you know, on, on the country, 
opportunities, appointments, contracts, there and there. Deny, you know, the greater percentage of them from their rights, from their basic their access, their access to basic communities. You know, that, that, that's how many of them became part. All right, so the leader that Nigeria in 2023 is somebody that understands that we are in really difficult times and is willing and has formal capacity beyond the shadow of them um, to provide that kind of data. Okay. Um, let's let's go. Let, yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard you. Uh, that kind of a leader is uh, because before we run out of time, we need to we need to know specifically the kind of things that we want them to do. Now we have established what kind of a leader that we have. We're listening here, close to the people, know the problems of the people, man of integrity, and everything. But we need to know uh, what they need to do in say education, say in power, say in security, the kind of things that Nigerians expect them beginning from you guys that are talking with me now. Let me go to Mr. Obani to take the first shot. What kind of, what things do you, in, do you hope that the next president can do in some of these things that I have mentioned? Let's say, let's say education, for instance. Okay, we seem to have lost to Barney's to, um, audio. Uh, let's come back to you, um, uh, Mr. George. Mm -hmm. Give us specifics, things that you'd like this uh, incoming administration to do when they get into office. Because in spite of All being right. good people, if that's what is we are going to have, like we are going to vote in people who are really good, but they may not have a clue of the kind of things that Nigerians need. So what do you intend for them to do when they get into office. All right. Um, I, I think the first thing that you already mentioned is that uh, our educational sector needs to be revisited. I'm sure you followed um, through, especially in this last administration, uh, how they have been called and concerned for Nigeria to prioritize education. Now, a lot of graduates go to school and millions are being turned out every year, every academic year. Hundreds of thousands graduate, go through the National Youth Service, and there are no jobs. And we've had situations in this, within this administration where, you know, some people came and said Nigerian youth are unemployed. So we need to go deep down into practical education so uh, are not just going through the world of school to be able to have a piece of paper you call certificate. We need to uh, introduce new means of learning. All right? So we're talking about vocational education. We're talking about technology. Uh, we're talking about improved school systems. I'm not talking about feeding Using seven billions of naira to feed primary school people, I'm not saying that is not needed, but let's look at the fact that the academic staff union went on strike for more than five months, and some people have been scared. So we need a government that will be able to prioritize, understand what most important, where education is concerned. So you want to say, if you are going to go to school, you've got to learn a skill or not. And you are able to implement that as a policy, you know, um, through, through the, uh, the necessary means. Just, I think, last year, there was uh, a summit, I think a, a European African summit, where President of African countries you know, were invited, and President Mohamed Bouhari was part of it, if you remember. And in that meeting, they agreed that for developing nations to be able to scale up, that they need to commit at least 35% of 
of their project. So education, surprisingly, the twenty twenty two budget by the time of the one like I remember, you know, had not been passed. Take them one of the boys came and presented the budget. I was expect that perhaps you would get maybe fifteen percent. But what did he get? He got less than ten. So it, it is not just about um, attending, you know, other global concessions, global meetings, you know, to participate. But somebody who would know what to do and have the willpower to actually do them. That's the kind of leader we where education is concerned. Somebody that get it to say, look, this educational aspect of Nigerians need to be able to go to school and have the skills. Let's look at the country, very blessed, mineral resources, you know, human resources, you know, brilliant people, you know, in the entertainment sector, in the business sector. Every sector you talk about, you have people who are extra talented, who on their personal efforts, through their personal efforts, have been able to do Silicon Valley business. You know, so we need to be able, we need a government that can increase, you know, the effort of this young people with the support of them. And that should be prioritizing education. You know, driving away from this normal education of go to school, the get education. No, we need practical education. Education that works. And the next leader of Nigeria, uh, must be the first that is committed to them. And that's on the educational aspect. But we can also look at the high rate of unemployment. You see, unemployment affects the youth the most because they form the larger percentage of the population. So, we want a government that will be able to look at the government and not say Nigerian youth are lazy. No, no, no. We want the government that we're able to say these people are trying because despite the mega resources available to them, they live in them. You know, they contribute to, to, to social development. I'm impressed with Nigeria and its personal amount You know, because when you look at the metrics across the world, they are not lagging behind. And that's despite the challenges we have internally. I used to say that if we had the opportunity that many of these developing countries, I'm not saying developed now, because I think that's a, a, a very wide margin. So we can look at our neighbors across Africa. We look at Ghana, we look at Rwanda, we look at South Africa. And, and we, we have decided that we want to compete. We want to make Nigeria better. Than you know, Africa, than every African country. If that's the goal, first of all, let me tell you, we'll have improved our economy, we'll have improved our education by more than two percent, and by just that decision. I'm being committed to that decision. So, uh, you know, the next president of Nigeria has his responsibility, you know, and his responsibility is to be able to say, I want to prioritize youth development because we know that if it's better for the larger population, it will trickle down. All right. So uh, there is a, a an AU agenda 2023, for example, that seeks to uh, ensure that there is a systemic power transfer, that there is a systemic handover of power. And an engagement of the youth into the political system. All right. So the next leader of Nigeria, she is someone who is committed to that dream, who is willing to drag it. You know, anything short of this, I'm telling you, the person may be wasting time. Amen. Amen. We have a lack of population, kind of love. As a matter of fact, we are looking at having about 400 million people in Nigeria in 2050. So, if we are going to have 400 million Nigerians, 
the population of the other continue to improve. So if it will continue to improve, then there must be provision and there must be concentration, you know, on that aspect. I think that's okay, much okay. Um, well, we have like a, a minute or so. Um, let's talk about security. The present administration says it has given everything that the security apparatus needs to perform their tasks. Um, what else do you think that can be done apart from just securing the guns and whatever they need uh, to, to fight insurgency, for instance, and banditry? What other things do you think can be You have less than deployed? one minute. In, in addressing a problem in, in this country, we look at it from the top. And we don't look at it from, from the angle of cost and effect. All right, so we talk about security problems in Nigeria right now. Kidnap Park, Boko Haram, so, and all sorts of atrocities going on. Uh, we seem to have lost that audio there, but um, all good. If we have time, we could bring him back. But for now, we'll have to take a break.